Egypt's. They were all basically more or less the same in the beginning, and then they've gone off, and because of their separate tracks, the separateness of their histories, the differences of their history, you have all of a sudden, by the way, they're all about the same age, and you have all of a sudden, you have 12 or 15 backgrounds which have 12 or 15 different characteristics. And so it doesn't matter whether you have the so-called Caucasian or the Aztec race. I think that was what, wasn't that what it was the Nazis had? The, or was it the Syrian? <laughs> I forget. I don't care whether you're in the heart of Africa or any place else. Now, I don't find them varying from the pattern in any way shape or form, not even vaguely. There's the snake men. There's the invaders. I'll bother putting them down. You'll recognize them one of these days. I'll have to make up a table. I've got to do this research myself. I haven't picked up this research. I, I can do all the job they should have done for the last 80 million years here in the last couple, but <laughs> it takes a little time. Uh, not much, but they, you've got your invader people. You've got a crew of, well, let me tell you the classifications they fall into here. A lot of your entertainers and uh, some of the bigger sparks that you run into are fifth invader people or one of the invader force people. These guys come in from Lord knows where. They're picked up in certain groups sometimes picked up for certain capability. They're trained in one way or another, and they'll hit planets and so on, sort of all at once, hit them in various and peculiar ways. And uh, they've been through enough hell and high water that when they get, by the time they've gotten here, they're pretty well convinced their power is shot. And they have, they're, they're, they, they feel pretty degraded. They don't feel like they're worth a shucks. They don't feel like they can use any energy. They, they feel like they've got to hold this back. They usually have pretty good imagination. You don't have to credit the invader theory. You can go ahead stumbling around like everybody else has stumbled around. You don't have to say there are invaders or anybody lives in space. You can assume the what's known as the anthropomorphism, uh, earthman, supersanitary centarianism of the universe-ish type thing, where the only thing alive in this whole universe is an earthman, and uh, the only planet which is inhabited in all these quadrillions to the quadrillion, quadrillion, quadrillion of stars, the only one that has any planets is Sun 12, and uh, you can assume this if you want to. I mean, people have assumed a lot more idiotic things. They've assumed that <laughs> they've assumed that wearing glasses made your eyes better. <laughs> now, so these characters have run into the cops and, and they've gotten their hands bashed up. Well, you'd find out if you were running this case, you'd just find a certain series of cants. And if you ask all cants, then these races bust down automatically. You'd find out something was wrong with their hands or they had an emotion about hands. One of the invader forces has this slogan that the, the paymaster is sensation. And that's all the pay there is as far as they're concerned. So they're operating a unit. They have certain goals and plans. We're not even interested in those. We're just interested in this fact. And what's the next thing? You get the chance. You find out that darkness is a keynote. They're hiding. That darkness has a great value to them. They want to hide in that darkness. All right, you take your snake man. Where this becomes interesting is in terms of behavior. And you don't care about that either. Your snake man's going around. He's very quiet. He wants you to prove everything. Prove, 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 prove. And if there's any gadget made under the sun, which is mechanical, he's bound to find it and turn it out. Prove. Prove, prove, prove. One I know of, for instance, bought a couch that had a vibrator in it, and he stepped up the vibrator so he put the guy down on the thing so his forehead touched the button that the vibrator vibrated on, 
And uh, then he'd lie there, and this thing would shake him up, and it'd make people very sick. But uh, he proved it all right. Well, his main idea is, is he will protect snakes. He'll do a lot of other things, but that's all right. He'll, he'll create snakes like mad, but he wouldn't destroy any. Another one's the cat people. God knows where the cat people came from. Lord, 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 these people are sure lost. Most of them are mad as hatters. And they have huge, huge, often slanted eyes. So very thin. And the eyes will be big and quite often very feline. And they're lost. They don't know where they are. And they kind of look like cats. They'll talk to you about cat birds from some place or another. But what do we find in their case? We find out that cats are a can't destroy. And then there are other people who are similar to that that find cats a can't destroy that aren't part of the cat people. Because to be a good, valid cat person, one of the first requisites is to be strictly fruitcake and very thin. They're really lost. I don't know who got hold of the cat people or where or brought them into the track, but they spin as quick as you look at them. You've known some of them, I'm sure. They're kind of sweet and they're kind of anxious to help and they're kind of starry-eyed and they're not very forceful, they're very weak. And uh, all of a sudden, if you were to tell one of them suddenly that he couldn't possibly be of any help, you just watch him spin right on the spot. And then... As we go on from there, we find the guys that they become two types of individual here on earth. They become the capitalista, the commissar, the Nazi police chief. They're all the same breed. Hold on. They've got to pull everything in on them. And by the time you've started to process this character, good God, get a building jack. They have pulled everything in on them, just everything. Hold on, hold on. But how do you cure it? By getting them to throw something away, a toothpick. You'll find out immediately they wouldn't let go of anything. That's the first thing you'll find out about them. That tells you immediately that they belong to that nebulous race. Now, then there's your monitor people. The female of that species, we've decided to call the Merrimack. <laughs> after that ancient battle <laughs> so these people you want them to test on them they by the way this is peculiar to a lot of these other races so it isn't a singular test these people love to wear horn rimmed spectacles if you could let them go around with horn rimmed spectacles on and no glasses in, the, in them they'd be happy that's because your monitor wears heavy goggles. But don't mention insects to these people. They'll ordinarily just go off the pin. They've got something to do with insects. I don't know what. These people are quite salvageable, by the way. But they're organizers par excellence. And you'll find them out in the society doing terrific jobs of organization. None of these people you understand are bad. This is peculiarities. And boy, you'll find these in the brown race and the black race and the yellow race and everything else. You'll find these same characters. They came down and did a spread. Now, those are just a few. There's just a few of these. And they are almost perfect at espionage. They may not realize it, but they are trained espionage people. You just start giving them an examination that would be given standardly to an espionage officer, and they will answer up perfectly on every line. And their characters, and very prettiest bodies, they're at sudden death. They're right over there against death. And you try to pick them up along the line any place, and oh, no. I don't know where they come from or who they're spying for. It's a big, big joke. I don't know who they are. I'd find out if they were dangerous. They aren't. Terribly bad sense of reality. Awful. Just grim. That's rather typical. These are types. The invader boys present a hard case, mostly because they start feeling very degraded. And there are several crews of those, by the way. There's not just one crew. 
and all of them feel more or less degraded. But the 3rd Battalion of the 5th Invader Force is practically out through the bottom of the chute. It's a level of degradation you never heard of. Yet they might be operating quite well. They're, by the way, terribly effective here on Earth as revolutionaries. So we quite often find them in Scientology. They're quite effective. That's what's strange about it. They can't handle any more force than that, but how much force are they capable of handling this beyond computation, practically? 